So now let's talk about how you might actually implement a Java executor. So, so far we've really talked primarily about what the interface looks like. It's intentionally very simple, but when you want to get down and actually write some code and have things run concurrently, you've actually got to make some implementation choices in order to make everything come together in a coherent way. So we're going to talk about some of the different ways you can implement the executor interface. So there's a bunch of different ways you can implement this interface. You can use a fixed size thread pool. You can use a cached thread pool. You can use a work stealing pool. You can make your own custom thread pool. It's really up to you how much effort you want to go into and, and what the benefits are for your particular program. The configuration of an executor is typically performed once by selecting something known as the execution policy for the tasks that are going to be passed into it. So this is typically kind of a one-shot thing you get to do. And let's talk about what the different execution policies are for the Java executor thread pool implementations. So here are some of the considerations that you have to think about when you select an implementation with respect to these policies. In which thread will a task be executed by the executor implementation? Will it be in an existing thread in the pool, which is the case if you choose a fixed size thread pool implementation of the executor interface? Will it be a new thread that's created and added to the pool? Will it be a new thread that's just created but not added to the pool? You have a lot of control over that based on what implementation you choose and how you use that implementation. As I mentioned before, there's even a single threaded version of the executor that doesn't use a pool at all. Another consideration that you have to think about is in what order will tasks be executed? Will the tasks be executed in first in, first out, or FIFO order? Will they be implemented in last in, first out, LIFO order? Will they be implemented in priority order? And once again, there are certain decisions that you get out of the box, which are typically largely FIFO um, for, for things like fixed size thread pools and so on. But you also get control over this. And if you define your own thread pool implementation, you can determine how you want tasks to be ordered while they're going to be executed or while they're waiting to be executed. Another very interesting question, how many tasks can run concurrently? Is the maximum number of tasks limited by the number of cores or some approximation therein, like would be the case with a fixed size thread pool implementation? Will it be some other factor, like you just keep spawning them and then reusing them if they're available when new work comes in, which is the case with the cached thread pool implementation? Is it some variant, some hybrid model like you get with work stealing thread pools? Those are other decisions you have to decide. And then another very interesting question is, if not all tasks can be executed because you've got too much work for the system to keep up with, which new tasks should be rejected and how should the application be notified about this? So if you've got more work than you can possibly juggle, eventually you're going to have to start rejecting things. Otherwise, the whole system just bogs down and to a, cre a screeching halt. Should execute fail silently? Should there be an exception that's thrown? And, and you get to decide these different matters. So for example, if you're going to want to be notified if the, the thread pool implementation can't take the next piece of work to do, then you should go ahead and set the rejected execution exception. And there are various ways to do that, which we'll talk about later. Another interesting question is what actions, if any, should be performed by the framework before and or after executing a task. Now in, in the Java framework model, there isn't much control over this unless you build it yourself, which you certainly can do. If you use Android and earlier versions of Android, you have this very interesting framework called the async task framework, which we'll talk about briefly later in the course. And the async task framework has some hook methods called on pre-execute and on post-execute, which can be used in order to have hooks that run before the task starts to run in a background thread and after the task finishes executing in a background thread. And the reason, typically the reason for doing this is to give a chance to do some kind of interaction with the user interface, which has to run in the main thread or the UI thread before and after you actually do the computation in the background thread. This is a very cool mechanism. Sadly, has become deprecated in later versions of Android, but still is interesting to think about and is actually described in the textbook I recommend you look at if you're interested called um, concurrent uh, or Java concurrent programming. So 
you might want to take a look at that because they talk about how to do that there. So that's the end of the overview of some of the implementation choices that you'll need to make when you decide what implementation mechanism to map onto the Java executor interface. And the typical way this is done, by the way, is, is calling factory methods that are available on the executor's utility class and or other things you can do on something called the thread pool executor, which is the implementation that's used uh, that provides you with all kinds of different knobs to control, as we'll talk about later.